Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, love addiction and uh, co you know love addiction, codependency, attachment, all of that. And um, so, with the you know lo love addiction, it's the, the thing with the love addiction is that I'll just sort of start with what. Uh, you know, uh, one of my teachers said about what Ramana said. Like, if you if you want if you want um, if you ever have the idea that something outside of yourself can make you whole, or that you need something outside of yourself to to make you whole, then what's happening is that that object or that thing or that concept has been um, has had the pr projection of glamour placed upon it. So, th so that is an internal ego projection that, uh, let, if we talk about love addiction, oh, this woman or this man will be the thing that will fix me. And as soon as you have that thought, then um, uh, what happens is you're not, you actually start to go into a level of uh, addiction. And the, the level of addiction is, is kind of a neediness. It's a kind of an emptiness. It's a kind of a, a feeling of wanting something. Or you could, I, I could call it like for. I mean, I, I go to twelve-step fellowships. It's like the energy of wantingness. You know, like I was in donuts. Like, oh, if I could only have a donut now, and then after I'd eat a donut, if I could have another donut later on, and then after that donut, if I could have another donut, and uh, that that kind of needy wantingness of more and more. And the thing with that energy field. Uh, which Hawkins described is you, you can never get enough. Mm -hmm. There's just not enough donuts. Mm -hmm. You think you think just I just need one donut and I'll be okay. Just give me the one donut and I'll be fine forever. And you have the one donut and that, and then after a while you need another donut. And then uh, and then Hawkins described it. So what Ramana said was like if you're having a thought that you want something outside of yourself, really, you're in you're now in a negative field because you're in the field of wanting. You're starting to go into fantasy. You're starting to go into obsession. Like this, this meeting would be only nice if there was a donut, donuts present. Otherwise, there's something missing from this room, you know. And I can't wait until this is over, until I can get another donut. Because if I meet a person, I'll only like them if they eat donuts with me. You see, so it's a bit like that. So, so the same thing with the love addiction is like you start to. If you're not with the person, you want to be with the person. And uh, also, when you're with the person, then later on, uh, you can't get enough of the person. And they can't give you enough of what, whatever it is you want from them. Because you need more all the time. Mm -hmm. so, so the thing is, so what's happening in the early stages of addiction is that um, in the early stages, you're having the thought, and it's kind of pleasurable. Oh, if I can eat the donut, if I can meet the girl, it's going to be so nice. And then you're, you're in that field, it's a limiting idea which is bouncing around in the unconscious. Oh, it'll be so nice when I meet, the, meet that woman, it'll be so nice when I eat that donut. And then when you meet them, it's like you, f you get a high, you get this happiness. This is why it's called addiction. It's like, oh, I can't wait to eat the donut, I can't wait to meet the girl. And then when you meet them, you get this euphoria. You get, oh, I, f I feel so happy eating that donut, it's, it's, the sugar is so delicious. Or, oh, you know, or, you know, her smile is so beautiful, I feel so happy, I'm on cloud nine. So it, it tends to affirm the belief system that, you know, that this object makes me happy. Donuts make me happy. Yes, I ate the donut and I feel happy now. I wasn't feeling happy before I was eating the donut. But now I'm eating the donut, I feel really, really happy. Now I'm with the girl, I feel really, really happy. And that happiness um, was described by Ramana is the absence of my thought for wanting it. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually experiencing the happiness of, of my ego playing dead because now it, it, it got you to get the thing you think you wanted. And so it's very clever, it shuts up. Mm -hmm. It shuts up, oh, you're eating a donut. Oh, you're in front of the girl right now. And you feel this happiness. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, this happiness starts to fade off. And it says, look, you know, it does make you happy, you just need more of it. 
And if you were to eat donuts non-stop for the rest of your life, you'd be happy forever. So you become like an addict, like you become a food addict. Like, you know, you'll make sure that you only walk past donut shops. You'll make sure you have a few extra donuts stashed in your bag, a few extra donuts, because you get the fear of the shortage of donuts. <laughs> it's true. You get the fear that you might one day go out and you might, that all the donut shops might be closed and you have to take the donuts with you. <coughs> and so you, have, you like, you know, the horror of like a lack of donuts for the day. So the same thing happens with love addiction. You know, you become like, uh, like you know, uh, you can't go on holiday because, or if you're going on holiday, I have to come on holiday and you shouldn't take, uh, you're not allowed to visit your friends for more, because in the early stages of addiction, you can live without your addiction for a period of time. But in end stage addiction, you need more and more. So in the early days, <clears throat> you can have one donut a day and that's enough. But like three years later, you have to have at least eight donuts a day to feel okay. And, and then a few more years later, you have to have donuts nonstop. And with a person, you become more and more controlling for their attention mm -hmm. and their time. And you start to become more like this thing of like, well, you know, you have to give, spend more time with me and you mustn't leave your socks on the floor and you mustn't talk to that friend who I don't like as well and then I'll be okay. And then you become even more controlling and then it's like with love addiction, you, you know, the, these other things, jealousy, possessiveness, like don't look at another person, you know, otherwise you make me angry, uh, you know, you shouldn't, you need to come back to the flat before 6 p.m. every day. Uh, otherwise, uh, and I needed to put a, like a GPS tracker on you so I know everywhere you're going. Mm -hmm. So it's like, the, and you need, you need those hits more regularly throughout the day. Like, make sure you text me every 10 minutes, you know. And you didn't text me. There was an hour <coughs> you didn't text me. Like, why, you know, why didn't you text me for that one hour? <laughs> were you meeting somebody? Like, where were you? You start to go through their mobile phone to make sure, like, are they meeting somebody else during that time? So that's how the, it's like this ferocity for wanting more, and even if they give you more, it's still not enough, mm -hmm. and then you want even more, and you go, well, you know, you need to give me even more now, and then they can't, so it becomes like that. So, so if you're suffering from love addiction with somebody, and you're becoming more and more controlling, and you're wanting more and more attention. People are looking horrified in the room, but anyway. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's not pretty, love addiction is not pretty. And um, then, you know, you need to get that connection because you projected, you projected the power out onto another person and you've made them the thing. So the more you project power out, the more um, you put fantasy into this person being the, the thing that is the fix the stronger it gets, and so the more polarized the effects become. When they're not with you, or they're not messaging you all the time, then you feel very, very bad, and when you do, you feel some relief. But then that relief is very short-lived and you need more. So, so what I recommend, especially if you're in a relationship and you're becoming more and more controlling and need more and more attention, more and more affirmation with somebody, is that you should give them space, more and more space, and try and let go of your demands and your wanting more from them. You should actually, and that will start to heal the relationship because they'll probably be feeling very like controlled and very want, and the more you try and control them, get more, the more they'll want to leave. Mm -hmm. So they'll be want, saying like, I need more and more space because you're asking for more and more. So the, the relationship will start to go in the wrong direction. So if you're in a relationship where there's love addiction, to reverse it, like start to give them as much space as they want and try and, try and, try and refrain and get support, 12-step program, for example, or a spiritual mentor or therapist, try and get support with, with releasing your control on them. And this will now bring up the withdrawal. So mm -hmm. this will now bring up the feelings of like, oh, if I don't get a text from them every 10 minutes, I'm starting to feel abandoned. I start to feel like, this person doesn't love me if they don't give me lots of attention. All these, all these feelings, you may get panic attacks, you may start to feel fear, you might start to feel deprivation, you might st start to feel like even quite bad. But that's the positive, because that energy is finite. 
You know, like if someone's giving up sugar addiction in the beginning, if you've been eating sugar non-stop all throughout the day for like months and years, and you suddenly say like, today's the day I give up sugar, you're going to feel like crap. You know, you will probably feel like crap for a while, not forever, but for a while it'll be very intense. It'll be, you might have panic attacks, headaches, you might start to get all kinds of physical symptoms like you're having a heart attack because you need that sugar to stay alive. You can actually, you can have extreme symptoms even with, uh, with addiction withdrawal, which, you know, or panic attacks. But, you know, get spiritual support, go through those dark feelings with support and help or going to spiritual groups or doing the Course in Miracles, having a spiritual mentor, give them space and these dark feelings will come up for a period. And you, you want to try and get through the withdrawal with as little you know, take it as as little drug as possible. So if I need uh, affirmation texts, I need to know everything they are. Try and put, you know, try and get some guidance to let that go and go through those dark feelings. And then at, at a certain point, you'll start to f feel like uh, you're getting reconnected to, uh, to spiritual grace. You'll start to be able to breathe. And... Um, and then, you know, the relationship will start to blossom as you start to get that connection to yourself, to God, to the divine, to the infinite. And it's one of the things where, um, you know, having that, that peace and that love from within is one of the great things. It's one of the greatest blessings. Also, the thing of, like, what is addiction and attachment and love addiction and what is unconditional love? They're, pol they're, po they're polar opposites. I mean, it's hard because all of society imprints us with that love addiction is, is really love. Love addiction is not love. You know, love addiction, like, if you leave me, I'll kill myself, is not, that's not, that's not love. Like, if you look at somebody else, you're cheating on me, and I can't live without you, so please stay at home all the time and make sure you come home by 6 p.m. That's not love. That is, that is attachment. That is love, love addiction. That is dependency. So that is, um, um, <clears throat> this can be the thing, you know, with family uh, and stuff as well, and love addiction on a romantic level, on a family level. The thing that really, really helped me is if you really love someone, for me, if I really love someone, I would try not to have an attachment to them. Because why? Because you radiate out more love when you don't control the person, when you're not, when you're not trying to uh, be their God and make sure you, you organize everything for them and that they have to do everything the way you want them to so that they can be happy in the way you want them to. That is actually, that is you playing God in their lives and that means that your energy, your vibration or the level of consciousness drops because, you know, you, you must do this, otherwise you're not going to be safe, you have to do that, you have to, you have to make sure you have to... Actually, you're not radiating out, you know, your vibration is quite low while you're doing, giving them all these things, these things you have to do. You're, so you're actually giving them less love, you're giving them more darkness. And this can be very hard for, like, family members or parents or something, is that actually... <clears throat> Uh, because they, they start to want to not be around you or trust you because you're, so, you're giving them so much, uh, so many instructions. So actually, the, and also the miracles, because we do a course in miracles in here, they'll experience more miracles the more you let them go and you're more unconditionally loving to them. Because as you go into that field of grace, as you're in the oneness, as you're in the infinite bliss, as you're in the stillness or the silence, because you're you're actually releasing the, your family karma or your romantic karma with that individual. So you're actually helping them to, to access higher spiritual states by you working on how you want to control them. So it's actually, so you're blessing them and you're blessing yourself and there's a greater chance of a holy relationship developing and for miracles to enter because there's more light because you're letting go. More light comes through surrender rather than trying to tell them how they should live their life and what they should be doing. So it's a, it's a total paradox to, um, you, know, I, you, know, I, you know, I was an addict. So for me, it would be like, you know, and I was a very, you know, a very dark addict. So be, for me, it'd be like, I'd see like, if I wanted a girl, it'd be like, how can I control that girl to like me? You know, so I'd read every single book on like, you know, 
like what can I say and what can I do and what's the best chat out lines on the planet you know, who's got the best chat out line of course and so it'd be like how can I impress a girl so that she likes me so that kind of stuff is like manipulation and it might work but the universe will always give you what you are so if I'm if I'm trying to manipulate someone, probably the universe will give me someone who's going to equally give me a tough time in some way. Because my energy uh, that I'm putting out towards women is going to be that of, of, you know, so the lesson I'll get from the universe will not be good. So it's also in my interest, I sort of think from, if you want the best possible relationships that you work on yourself, on how you want to control, how you want to, and then and then if you do that with family or your current romantic partner, your vibration will increase. And if their vibration, if it's meant to be that, that the vibrations will match and that will be a holy relationship, and if it's not meant to be, uh, yeah, whenever, that's another talk, isn't it, really? Uh, if, if people aren't willing to spiritually grow as you're growing. Um, but that's another talk. So, so if you love them, let them go. Uh, or at least if you love them, let go of the control and let go of the, let go of the demands and let go of the jealousy and, let, and give them space and try and come from... You know, I always think like if I was in a relationship, like I'd be working for full transcendence mm. to be present. But really, I, I would be more for universal love. I wouldn't be more so for attached love with the woman. So, and I think that would be the biggest gift I could give a woman, <clears throat> is to stay in the witnesser, to stay in that grace, because then you're out of the way, so God's love can shine forth without control. Then if I get attached, when I start to get attached to someone, I'll start to get jealous, I'll start to get possessive, I'll start to, you know, if, if they wanted to go for a week away, I'd start to be wanting to know, well, are they a week away? Are they, like, should I check on their phone when they come back to make sure... That, there isn't some hot guy that they've been messaging, you know. So it's like it's like that kind of thing. So from addiction, the withdrawal, like trying not to control and trying to feel those feelings and taking sugar with sugar withdrawal is very much like love addiction withdrawal. You know, you go through intense tense feelings, panic attacks, cravings, headaches, like uh, you're gonna die unless they give you what they want. It's the same with sugar. But as you go through that phase, you get to the other side, you get that reconnection with God, you get that reconnection with grace, and then it's a, there's the potential for a holy relationship of miracles and love. And I always think, you know, the real thing with love is like, uh, which would be really horrible for my ego, is the thing is like, if they find somebody better for them, I should be happy for them. You know, like, it shouldn't be like, oh, I love you so much. And now that you've met this Hollywood superstar, uh, like, don't go with them, <laughs> like, stay with me. It's like, you know, that can't be, that's not unconditional love. So that would be the thing of, um, like, Hawkins talks about, like, you should suffer the worst possible fear. So I guess if I got attached to a woman, the worst possible fear is they'll meet somebody else and dump me. Mm. So then that would be the thing I'd try and transcend. Like, mm. can I be, can I feel today, like, I'm in, either I'm in bliss or non deal place. Or, if I have to think about it, if she found someone better, could I let her go with love? Mm -hmm. So those would be the type of things I'd be working on to give her that. Or another thing that I work on, and this is now going to a more advanced level of consciousness. I remember once Hawkin was saying on one of his things, like, um, like he was eating a sandwich. He was eating, some of you probably remember this bit. He was eating a sandwich and the phone rang. And he spoke to the person on the phone. And because obviously he's in the next present moment, he's enjoying the conversation on the phone. And then he forgot to go back and finish his sandwich. Because you're in the present moment. You don't, like this is now. And when the next now comes, you've forgotten the now that was, you're not tracking the last now. So that's how I sort of think of it. If I'm on a date with a woman, it'd be okay, I'm on the date, there's just presence. Every second is presence with the woman. And it's like the second the woman is like left, that's the next now. Don't hold on to the story. It's like, okay, woman gone, squirrel on tree. That's it, you see. Forget the woman, that's squirrel on tree now. This is this new moment. So don't try and hold on to a story. So every now is now. And whether she's there or not, it's still the next now. And then the, every now is like 
the holy now. Mm -hmm. So don't hold on to an object being the mm -hmm. thing that's making a holy now. So those, those are the things um, in general, I'd say. If you're in love addiction, it's not fun getting out of it, but it's, but it's the best thing for both. You know, going through the initial pain of not doing those things around the person is very painful, but it's actually bringing love into the relationship. So you see the pain, recontextualize the pain as a blessing for both of you, as opposed to, you know, as opposed to something which is just a pain for you, which you're resentful at, sort of thing.